All right, Mark, how you doing today? I'm real good, actually. Um, it's the end of the day here in the UK, so uh, the weekend's about to happen, so that's okay. Sounds good, sounds good. So I'm honored to have Mark Ashcroft on the line with me. CEO, Hartness Screens, how are you again? Yeah, it's, it's good, real good, thank you. And it's a, a real pleasure to be talking with you guys. Awesome. Now let everyone know what you have going on. So Harkness Screens, the clue's probably in the name Screens, we're the world's biggest manufacturer of cinema screens. So whether you're in AMC, Regal, Cinemark, you're looking at one of our screens. And uh, we've been doing it for the last 90 years. And um, I reckon of the 160,000 screens in the world, 90,000 of them are ours. So. Uh, might not be the biggest business in the world, but we're certainly very proud of what we do. And let's talk about the 90 years. Go back a little bit. When did you oh, come on board? Uh, not 90 years ago. Um, I've been on board seven years. Um, I, I, I've been working in the US with a, a company called Party City. And I'd had some great experiences working in, in, in the US and got the opportunity to buy into Harkness Screens um, as CEO and a shareholder. Um, so that brought me back to where I've been born here in the UK. Um, and I took over the leadership of a company that um, celebrated its 90th birthday this year. Nice, nice. So we want to talk about the journey. How was it buying into it? What made you come on board and buy into it? I, I've always enjoyed manufacturing. Um, I like to see things being made. And I very quickly learned that Harkness, um, although a relatively small company, had manufacturing sites in five locations, um, the largest in the United States in Virginia and the smallest in uh, Bangalore in India and the thought of making manufacturing really has always been something that I I personally enjoy professionally enjoy and the cinema industry is is really um, something that I've always always enjoyed to to look at from afar and this was an opportunity to really get under the bonnet and have a look what uh, what it was all about. So that's that was really the main attraction. Nice, nice. Now let's talk about white paper. What would you like to share about white paper? Yeah, so cinemas throughout uh, 2020 have been really badly impacted by the pandemic um, and have had to close had to limit how many people can go back into the, the cinema when, when they're able to reopen. Um, so in India, currently, all the cinemas in India are closed down. Wow. And we don't know when they're going to reopen. Um, hopefully before the 15th of October, but we really don't know. So we, um, we felt that we needed to help our cinema customers reopen and stay open so we looked at how our cinema screen technology could be used to create barrier screens to allow physical distancing and that was really where the white paper came from in that we were approached by rather than cinemas we were suddenly approached by schools colleges, bars, restaurants, who all wanted to know more about what our technology could do for them. So we, uh, we had our scientists in the United States, Italy, UK and France put together some real informative data for the schools, the schools administrators to understand what they might do to help those reopenings. Okay. Now, speaking of schools, 
Uh, right now, the university is spending a lot of money. Do you think your company can save them some money? Yeah, I think you're right. Universities um, really want to get their students back physically. Um, students have got massive fees and they, as the customer, want to be on site. Yes, they, they use modern technology to learn, but the, the social interactions are, are equally as important. So we found around the world, universities have tried to create a, a safe environment to get the, the students back. And they've, they've got a spend that's available to them, but what they want to do is they want to create something that doesn't alienate, doesn't scare people. And what they've found using our um, technology is that they can adapt it to their existing premises. They don't have to damage expensive equipment. Um, and the, the cost effectiveness is, is very, very, very good. So they've, they've been happy to, to work with us. Um, and I, I believe they'll continue to do that. Nice, nice. Now you also had some success in London. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> One of my favorite topics is pubs. So the English pub is very important to me. Um, and we, um, we were fortunate um, to be approached by a, a pub called Barge East that actually is number one on, on TripAdvisor for London. And they wanted to get back reopen and they wanted to create a safe environment for their staff. Um, so they invited us down to fit out their establishment with our barrier screen technology. And, you know, they, they really found, found it useful. It allowed them to start to reopen and start to get their customers back enjoying themselves. And all the feedback we have is that it, it, it's created, it created a great environment. People are able to get together in a safe environment. Um, and we're, we're, we're really thrilled that what is really a cinema screen is able to give that sort of protection and that, that feel good factor. Nice. Nice. Now the PVC is being seen as an alternative to plexiglass now. That's right. Yeah. Now plexiglass is great. You know, I, I, I really think plexiglass has um, a, a role in providing uh, safety um, in a number of ways. Where we looked at this was that large, large sections of plexiglass can be very difficult to install and can mean that you've got to drill holes into furniture, into walls, into floors, um, and it almost becomes a permanent fixture. Whereas our PVC is a lot lighter weight um, and can very often be cut to size on site. So it's easy to move around the country. Um, it's more cost effective to move around the country. And, you know, we, we make cinema screens that are 50 feet by 150 feet. So we can, we can, we can put in a smaller piece of material or as large a piece of material. <laughs> and that, that really is what we do. We, we love big screens. Nice. Now, Harness is a global brand. Are you guys expanding to the US? Or do you have any locations in the US? Yeah, so the US has always been our largest market. And it's actually, um, it's actually a market that um, we invested very heavily in over the last 20 years. It's got our, largest and most modern manufacturing plant in Roanoke, Virginia. Um, and I, I guess we are the largest US screen manufacturer. 
Um, it's a really important market to us. We work closely with the likes of AMC, Cinemark, Regal. We work closely with a Dolby, an IMAX, a Christie, a Barco, the big names in, 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 in cinema in the United States. Um, and it's really our, our size in the United States that's allowed us to expand into China, India, um, and obviously our home base has always been Europe. Um, and Europe's, you know, continues to be an important an important market for us. Nice. So that actually helped you save jobs in the United States. What's your take on that? I think it's important, given where we're at in the sort of cycle of cinemas opening, reopening, um, that we, we're able to fulfil the requirements of those cinemas. So we need we need to keep our factories open we need to keep the expertise in those factories so that they can produce cinema screens now if the cinemas aren't open and they can't buy cinema screens the danger is that we'd have to start to close down factories by being able to manufacture barrier screens for safety purposes, we've been able to keep the guys and girls in the factories fully occupied and we've been able therefore to make sure that our overall reduction in, in headcount globally has been less than 10%, which, you know, given where the industry's at, um, we're very, very pleased that we've been able to protect those jobs. Nice, nice. Now your Virginia location supplied the PPE products. How does that make you feel? Yeah, look, it's it's one of the most fantastic factories. Um, it's ultra modern. It's got all our latest technology, and you know it is uh, a sight to behold to see one of those giant screens being manufactured. Um, when I when I suddenly told the, the team at Roanoke that they were going to have to start making smaller screens, um, there was a look of, well, we don't, we like big screens. No, no, but we're going to have to make some smaller screens. We're going to make these screens six foot by five foot. Wow, we don't, we don't make screens that small. So the initial reaction was, we can do it, but hey, it's not a big screen. Um, but what we've, what we've learned is that the, the craftsmanship and the technology means that we can make these screens very effectively and, you know, we can really give the likes of the universities and the schools a very cost competitive product that goes some way to creating additional space and provides that sort of physical distancing rather than the sort of the slogan that might be stay one meter apart or two meters apart. You can physically stay apart because of this screen. Now the product received an ANSI certification. Let's talk more about that. Yeah, in, interesting. We, um, we we started to manufacture a series of products and one of those products was a face shield um back in 2000 i was i was based over in um san francisco working for a an optical business and one of the things that we did in in optics was we would have our our eyeglass lenses tested by a company called Colt Laboratories over in the US. And I saw our face visor and said, hey, we need to get this tested by Colt Laboratories. I'm sure they'll have a test that proves the optical quality or prove droplets. Um, and sure enough, Colt, Colt tested our, uh, our face visor to ANSI and uh, we, we were granted the certification. And uh, that's really, really shown um, that we're serious about supplying these 
protective shields and barriers. Now, making this shift to the PPE products, how challenging was that? I think emotionally for, for the guys around the world, um, they, they're all in love with cinema. They, you know, they're the ones that go to the premieres of movies. They, all our employees love movies. And I think emotionally they were so upset at seeing cinemas having to close their doors that there was a real, a real sort of melancholy in, in our business. Um, and to suddenly be able to contribute to, let me give you the best example, the, the Indian government came to our factory in India and said, please help us, we need, we need protective equipment, can you, can you help make it for us? And, you know, within, in, the, in the space of three weeks, we trans you know, transform the manufacturing from cinema screens to protective barriers. Um, we've, we've done the same in the United States. We've done the same in China. The only factory we've not done that is in our, is in our French factory. Um, our French factory has continued to just make cinema screens. Now, a lot of signal screen uh, businesses in the industry are struggling. What advice or what kind of information can you give them? I think for cinemas and companies like ourselves that supply cinemas, it, it's, a tough, it's a tough place to be currently. Um, we as a company, we don't, we don't get involved with the Hollywood studios but all our customers are having to negotiate with those studios to get new releases. And, and that must be incredibly stressful for, the, for those companies. Um, not being able to open your doors to moviegoers, I think is, is tough on the cash. Well, I don't think, I know it's tough on the cash. And, the view that we've taken is that if we can convince moviegoers that cinemas are a safe environment, an environment where you can see the best movies on the best screens, then that, that goes a long way to us helping other parts of the industry that are, are finding times tough. And that's really been our approach. Now you have some of your competitors that's now following your trend. So how does that <laughs> go? <ahead. laughs> it's it's a, it's an interesting one. You know, I um, I think for us cinema screens, we've always we've always been ahead of the pack, and we've always known that um, competitors would look at us, would would try and replicate what we were doing it was a real surprise when we when we shifted into protective shields and barriers that some of our competitors followed us into that <laughs> um you know i hope they realized how how big a challenge doing that was because you know it wasn't easy but hey you know i um i want to see companies being successful I, I don't like the thought that people lose jobs. I don't like the thought that companies can't exist anymore. And, you know, if, if something we've done has given an idea or an inspiration to somebody else and they can, they can survive as a result, well, fantastic news. Long may that continue. So how proud of yourself are you for buying into the company, being a CEO, being a trendsetter? <laughs> I, um, I, I'm a very fortunate guy that I, I do something that I love. And I've always enjoyed seeing other people being successful. And the last six months, you've, you've experienced people feeling the real lows of 
what's been happening around them. And if I'd been able to in any way help them manage that situation personally, professionally, financially, then, you know, I'm massively, I'm massively proud that I've been able to contribute in some small way to that. Um, in, term, in terms of our business, um, I think being CEO of any business in this environment's got its, got its real challenges. Um, and one of the things that I started to reflect on was some of the things that I've learned over the years and my, my sort of ray of inspiration has been to start just writing some of those experiences down. There's a number of people that I know around the world who say, write a book. Well, I'm on chapter four. Um, who, who knows whether it'll ever become a book, but I've certainly, uh, I've certainly enjoyed being able to, to put those experiences down in writing. And, you know, maybe one day I get the opportunity to share it with a wider audience. Nice, nice. Now, being in the industry, is one country needs different than another country or is it pretty much the same? So I think what you, um, what you find um, around the world is in cinema, there's two, there's two, real, um, two real guiding lights, the size of the screen. So in Europe, cinema screens are on average smaller than the United States. So in the United States, it's all about the big, largest format of screens. <laughs> and, and that's why we've got our largest factory in the United States, in truth. Um, and then there's, there's something called, in the industry we call it game. And it's basically how bright the screen is when the projector shines on the screen. In Europe, the Europeans like low gain. Oh. In the United States, they like high gain. <laughs> so, so the, 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 real, the, real, um, the real challenge for us as a business is to try to make sure that our European customers get that slightly smaller, lower gain screen and our US customers get the biggest screen with the highest gain. Nice. Now, Mark, before I let you go, any closing remarks, final thoughts? I believe passionately that working in the United States for a number of years, like I was fortunate to do, the US is one of the greatest environments for, for innovation and for getting things done and throughout the last six months i really have massive respect for my colleagues in the us who have adopted that attitude and really have gone way way beyond where i thought was possible and I'm truly fortunate to, you know, to have colleagues like that. Um, and without those colleagues, none of what we talked about would be possible. Nice. Well, I'd like to thank you for doing the interview, Mark. Thank you. My pleasure. Talk to you soon. Take care. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.